In this video, we're going to look at some of the potential causes why the glute maximus might not be firing. Let me just do a quick recap. The patient lifts her left leg an inch or two off the couch. And let's say, for instance, when you palpate the hamstring and the gluteus maximus, if you lift the leg, there is inhibition into the gluteus maximus, so the hamstring is very dominant. And also, for, I did it in an earlier video where we looked at the lumbar spine. But for this one, I just want to discuss um, some causes of why the glute maximus might not be firing. So if I just lightly palpate the hamstring and the glutes and then slowly lift the leg, you will notice that the hamstring is very dominant, but the glute is quite slow in terms of its activation. So let's look at the nerve innervation to the glute to start with. The nerve for the glute max is actually the inferior gluteal nerve, which is a branch from L5 and S1, but it's mainly an S1 nerve innervation. So the patient has history of lower back pathology, disc pathology, and then the, the nerve root of S1 has been contacted, and that could be one reason why the glute max might not be working. We can also do some tests for that. We can use a patella hammer, and we can test for the S1 deep tendon reflex. So if I can get you to have a lie on your back, please. I normally would just test L4 as well, just to see what other reflexes are doing. When I test the L4 reflex, which is a patella tendon, I will bend the knee slightly, and then find the tendon of a patella, and I will just tap, and you can see there is a reflex elicited into the quadricep, if I just do that. There you go, you can see it activated there. So L4 was good, and that would be known as a two plus reflex. The S1 we can do in two ways. One, which is the typical way, I put my leg across my leg, I dorsiflex, and along the Achilles tendon here, we will place it onto stretch, and then we will tap, and you can see there is a S1 reflex. I can also do the same test by using two fingers, dorsiflex in the foot, and then tap in around the ball of the foot, and you can see when I tap, it is a two plus reflex. So it tells me about the nerve innovation from a sensory perspective, from S1, so it's able to come down, and then it's solicited back, it will be via the tibial nerve, coming back up from the, from the foot. So that's a good sign. Now, let's do the myotome test. So what I'm gonna do now is ask my patient to turn the foot out. So my patient is everting because the peroneals is also innervated by S1. I am going to apply pressure, and I want my patient to resist my pressure, resist my pressure, and you can see that she's very strong, and I cannot invert my patient's foot, so she is using the peroneal muscles to evert. If I just showed you on this foot, just as the demo, turn the foot that way, so this is using the peroneals, and if I just resist, resist that, and she is strong on that one. Also, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, known as the tricep surae, is also S1 innervated by the tibial nerve. If I dorsiflex and ask my patient to push, push firm, you can see that she's very strong. So that tells me that S1 on the peroneals and S1 of the gastroc and soleus is strong. And if I do the strength of the glute max by bending the knee, and if I hook my arm around, if I ask my patient to push so she's extending the leg and I can overcome her, let's say, then it tells me that the glute max is also weak. But in this case, the S1 reflex is good, two pluses, and so the, um, the activation of the glute is good because the nerve is, is okay. 